Oh, there's nothing in here as well. Oh, great. Let me put that down. Let's get started. So, uh, yeah, MMA, UFC, because it feels like I don't talk about it enough. Uh, and maybe because, for me personally, right, it's like oversaturation of, of UFC. I feel like I've been on UFC over. And it's like lately, every Saturday, there's a UFC I need to keep up with. And I love the UFC, and I love MMA, and I love boxing. But it just feels like lately, it's just like another one, another one, another one, another one, another one. Wednesday, we've got one. Tuesday, we've got one. Saturday, we've got one. Sunday, we've got one. And from the sounds of it, I've even heard rumours that they want to do two shows in one day. Uh, and that's one of the aims that they have. And I feel like, wow, this is crazy. What they want to do is, I mean, it's ambitious. I won't shoot anyone in the foot for being ambitious, but it is crazy too. And I think they need to be aware of oversaturation because if they are not and they are ignorant to it, people are going to suffer from burnout of it. And um, speaking of burnout... Uh, and suffering of burnout of something involving the UFC. Let's talk about something I wanted to talk about. I'm not going to be too smart RC today. This is going to be more of a serious, a serious video. Uh, and talking about the Ultimate Fighter. Now, we all know the history of the Ultimate Fighter. We all know it gave the UFC their success. It was one of those keys that took them from here to here to here to here, created stars for them, pretty much, in a way, added some depth to their roster with the first season. It did amazing things for them in terms of Forrest Griffin, Josh Kostya, Chris Lieben, Kenny Florian, made a lot of names. It really helped build up the Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture feud, and it wasn't a feud about two coaches who hated each other, but it did build up that fight and make that fight bigger as a result. The second season was even uh, did even more for them. Uh, gave them Rashad Evans, who went on to be a world champion. I uh, also forgot to mention Forrest Griffin, the world, former world champion. You know, produced Rashad Evans. You had that entertaining back and forth with Matt Hughes and the way he would react. I mean, it was another very good season. And then, in my opinion, the most successful season was season three because you had two coaches in Tito and Ken at the height of their war of words, at the height of their feud, and. That, to me, really shot up some momentum within the company. They had two very, very successful... Uh, well, they had two very successful shows coming out of that. They had that great pay-per-view uh, with Tito and Ken in terms of, like, how many people paid to see that show. And then they had the final battle at the end of the year, which was another great show and uh, was a lot of momentum for them as well. And it seems like, to me, as the shows progressed... I couldn't believe back in 2007, 2006 really, you said that I would suffer from an overload of The Ultimate Fighter and it would just go on and on and on and on and on and on and on, but I'd eventually just get fed up. And I would say as we got to seasons four, the, was it The Comeback? I mean, I like that show. Again, it made Matt, you know, re-established Matt Sarah uh, to a new audience. Um, you had that season, you had, um, what else was there? Nayashi Elbows. My actually elbows weren't a part of that, but still. You had season 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, which was Mira and Nogueira, which was a very entertaining season. You had uh, season 9, which um, was, was it that Rampage and, um, fuck, was it Rampage and, no, Bisping and Henderson. I mean, it still was going very strong, but to me, you started to see the talent pool thin in terms of what they were getting. And after season 10, Roy Nelson, to me, was truly the last, the last hitter that they really produced from the um, Ultimate Fighter that has gone on to be successful. He's been a moderate success, but, I mean, he's no bum. He's, he's a decent fighter. It's Roy Nelson. But, to me, he was the last guy I think that they um, really kind of made something out of after that. And then you go into seasons 11, 12, 13. I mean, look, was it season 21 now at this point? It's that ridiculous. And I'm just at the point now where the Ultimate Fighter gets announced and I don't give a shit. I, I really don't care anymore. And I wonder if I'm alone in this, but I kind of feel that as the Ultimate Fighter has gone on, it's just... My interest is just waning because I don't... I don't necessarily believe that the fighters that they're getting as the cast are necessarily the best fighters that um, they're on the bubble. I think they're just getting all these guys, and obviously because it's a TV show, guys 
who are going to fit certain moulds and I think that's another problem. I feel like we're getting the same characters over and over and over and over again and to me it's like in this mould really. You have the very proud Brazilian, and no offence to my Brazilian viewers, but you have the very proud Brazilian who's very intense about everything and very intense about his love for Brazil, which I respect, but you always have that character there. If you don't believe me, look at every season, you'll always get one of those at some point. I mean, we've got Diego Brandao in the Uriah Faber season, there was somebody else that was like that. It's like you always get this, but we go to Brazil! You get those kind of ones. Then you get the all-American wrestler that's pure and clean and that's just just cutting his teeth into the sport. You always get one of those. You get the um, Chris Lieben, Junie Browning type, the drunk that's uncontrollable, that is all over the place, but we're supposed to feel sorry for him. Uh, we always get that every season. By the time we got to the season with Carwin and Nelson, you had that freaking idiot with the pink motor. You know, let's not start him. But you just get these same people over and over and over again. And to me, it just doesn't feel genuine anymore as well. And reality shows, let's face it, are not really reality shows. They're put in these situations and told to react. These situations are somewhat contrived and orchestrated, and then they're just told to react naturally. And whilst I don't mind it, it's not really keeping my attention. And it is boring me. And then the other excuse is, oh, well, there's free fights, man. You should be grateful, as Dana would say. And to me, it's like, you get putting on free fights with people I don't care about. I've gotten to the point with The Ultimate Fighter. Let me think of the last couple of seasons now. Season 10 with Rampage and Rashad was season 10 when they started arguing back and forth. That was funny. That was a fun season. Uh, and that was the other thing. Now you really have to just get coaches that are willing to go back and forth with each other. Because that's the only thing that's remotely watchable about that because it helps build up a fight. But even that aspect now is overdone. I mean, they had um, Rashad and... Oh god, Rampage. You had Tito and Chuck, which was not a bad idea. I thought that was quite interesting, and but it didn't really do anything because the fight didn't even happen in the end. Uh, you had Koscheck and St. Pierre, which I actually felt worked. It was the last season I really got into that I watched consistently. Uh, and then after that, who did you have after Koscheck and St. Pierre? I can't say, you know what, I can't even remember. Seriously, I cannot remember. Who the fuck did they have? Lesnar and Junior De Santos didn't work. Lesnar and, and that, that people expected a lot out of that. And the talent pool was thin, in my opinion. It was very thin. And the only highlight was Brock's chicken shit comment. Uh, but in terms of talent, there was no one there. And, and what have any of those guys done since then? Um, who else? I mean, you don't have a Matt Brown who kind of works his way through the ranks and has become what he's become now. We don't have anybody like that from that season. Then you had Miller and Bispin, which was entertaining seeing those go, those two go back and forth. It was also divisions that haven't been established within the UFC, and it was entertaining for what it was. But again, you had the same types of personalities over and over again. And the only thing that I think carried that show is that it was new weight classes, so you had guys that wanted to prove themselves, and you had Miller and Bispin going back and forth. But that really was it. Then after that, what did you have? You had who, who? Is it Faber and Cruz? That, that, that one fell off a cliff for me. I mean, I watched three episodes and I stopped. Boring fight. Well, not the of boring fights. Good fights. But, you know, no interest. And that, again, what have these guys actually gone on to do afterwards? It's just like... The talent pool is getting thinner and thinner. And I think they've ultimate fighted themselves to death, when you think about it. You had Carwin and Nelson, which was God, abysmal and boring and did nothing for me, did absolutely nothing for me, I just did not care much for that season, and again, what did that person, what did what happened after that with those people, have they become, gone on to become some great star in the UFC, are they this massive draw, or this huge contender, no, and I can't even remember who won, and that should tell you all you need to know, and then they tried to revitalise it with John Jones and Charles Sonnen, which was a good idea, capitalise on all that stuff from, you know, the last quarter of 2012 with Chow and John, and Chow, I think, came off very, very well in that. John came off like an immature baby. And again, it promoted that fight. But what did it do in terms of making another fighter? Who even won that season in the end? Kevin Gastelum. I mean, Kevin Gastelum might go on to do something really well. And Uriah Hall, who was the guy that everybody thought was going to win, did nothing. He, he literally shit his pants when he got into the finale. Literally shit his pants. 
Uh, and those two look like prospects, so I mean the jury's still out there. But the interest in terms of like wanting to watch the show and see what happens, it just feels like a, a, I've seen this before, I've seen this I've, God knows how many times, it doesn't have the same effect. They had Rousey and Tate, which was a good idea, capitalise on their stuff there. But again, I was only really watching to see them two go back and forth, and then after four episodes I was done. Uh, the next season, what was that? BJ Penn and Frankie Edgar. I could care less. I like BJ Penn. I like Frankie Edgar. But I'm not interested in seeing those guys in The Ultimate Fighter. And I don't really have much faith in the talent pool at the moment that they're going for. And then what's the next one that's going to happen? Melendez and uh, Pettis. I mean, it would be good exposure for Pettis and Melendez. People don't really know them. But they don't strike me as two guys that are going to get into it much. So, in a sense... I know it sounds bad, I don't particularly care and I don't think I'm going to be really watching it unless there's some breakout talent like some breakout talent that is just going to just tear it up and I don't see that happening and then I'm hearing things like Ultimate Fighter China The Smashes you've got all of these other seasons and it's just so hard to keep up and it's to the point where I just don't have any interest in this particular show and is it just me but either they stop it or they just have to do something else but when you think about it, this is almost like outside of that UFC MMA bubble. I don't think it's necessarily just the UFC and MMA. I think that a lot of these reality shows have had the bubble burst on them. And now the formula, unfortunately, as it is, is to see dipshits like Joey Essex in The Only Way's Essex and dipshits like the Kardashians and dipshits like these, you know, people and that, what's that new car, George, 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 Jersey Shore, George, what the fuck those, those shows are called, and that's the only thing you got to go, and you, that's not going to happen in the UFC, with Ultimate Fighter, and I oh, heaven forbid that happened, anyways they went that way, but it's just like, outside of that you see things like X Factor, who really care, what really happens to the winner, who really cares about what happens to the winner, it's gotten to the point where they've X Factored themselves to death. No one gives a shit about any of these reality shows as much as they, you know, you know, used to. And I just think that overall the market has been oversaturated with reality show after reality show after reality show. And I think The Ultimate Fighter has become a victim of this and also a victim of too many seasons. And I have just lost zero interest. I just have no interest in it anymore. So, sorry about this video if it sounds like a rant or a moan. Uh, let me know what you think. I do MMA videos, I do pro wrestling videos, I do comic book videos, I do going to see the X-Men film, I do a lot of stuff, so if you uh, haven't seen me before and this is your first time, comment, rate, subscribe. If you have recommendations for videos you want to do, I always love getting those and those are usually my favourite videos to do. Please send those through and I will leave you all now and goodbye, peace, see ya.